Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Becca Shadow, the Internet Personality of the Best Hair. Would you like to know more? Well, then you're in luck, as we have yet another sequel to Starship Troopers to cover. Starship Troopers Traitor of Mars, the fifth film in the franchise and second to be produced entirely out of CGI in Japan. Though I guess you could quantify how many scenes in the first three were pure CGI anyway, but that's not the point. The big attraction this time around is they got Casper Van Dien to reprise his role as Johnny Rico for a sequel. Again. He came back to play the deus ex machina in the third movie, but here he's a more central character to the events that go on. While the war rages on the front lines, Rico has been delegated to training farm kids on Mars. However, this all changes when the arachnids of Klandathu attack the Red Planet. Of course, the movie's called Traitor of Mars, so you probably already figured out that things aren't exactly as they seem. It's actually a rhythm-based video game where Casper Van Dien shakes his ass to war-themed parodies of pop music. Either that or I'm not the best person to ask to define betrayal, but either way, let's take a look at Starship Troopers Traitor of Mars and see if they finally at least remember what the hell Starship Troopers is. The story opens with Rico leading a unit of mobile infantry on a mission to exterminate some bugs. Therefore, we go through the intricacies of the plan. We know what to do! Kill them all! Oh. Yeah, that's the idea. As if it didn't look enough like a video game already. Motherfuckers there like me just smacking the A button like, Yeah, just get on with it, I want to shoot something here. That was Lieutenant Baba, played by Scott Gibbs. And you also have Geo, played by Greg Arias. Camacho, played by Juliet Simmons. 101, played by DeRay Davis. And Dutch, played by Chris Gibson. They each have about a sentence to establish recognizable character traits before the action is underway. Which visually reminds me a hell of a lot of EDF Iron Rain. But hell, that might be a good thing. What's not good is the team's reaction time. Ooh. Don't suppose you could just run up to him and press X after that shit. The landing zone is pretty fucking hot, to say the least, but don't worry. Colonel Rico is here to help fight off the bugs. So long as this group of noobs can figure out which way to point their rifles, and maybe when you're firing your gas grenades, don't shoot them at your own feet. Kinda makes visibility a problem. Not to worry, Rico tells Baba he can still fight if he switches to infrared. That's not your infrared, Lieutenant. Oh, then what is it? It's not all bad if Fallout is anything to go by. Maybe some of them turn into ghouls and keep fighting. By the way, this is all just a video game anyway. How come I always get ripped in half? Bugs got your number, big man. And that number just so happens to be a decimal. The requests Rico gets to tone the training simulation difficulty down a tad don't go anywhere, as it turns out they're pretty much playing on professional game journalist mode anyway. Thus, they must do it all again tomorrow. Tomorrow being air day as, hey, wouldn't you know it, Mars got its own artificial atmosphere 25 years ago. Kind of important to bring that up. Rico, however, doesn't give a fuck. Not like they could go outside to breathe anyway. They're in a space station. Sure, their combat prowess is shit, but on the bright side, the kids have bright futures doing Let's Plays. <laughs> it's the wackiest shit we've ever seen on FedNet. Establishing that, yes, the internet does exist in the future. And fuck it, a couple of minutes ago they just got finished establishing air. Rico's happy friend here would be Raxas, played by Loraldo and Zaldua. Don't know exactly what he's doing here after Starship Troopers Invasion, but they do explain why Rico has found himself in the ass crack of the solar system babysitting the most inept squad in the Federation. Considering I'm the only commanding officer ever to let an arachnid queen through our Terran defenses. If you'd pulled that trigger, we'd all be dead. He fucked up, but it's okay, because he fucked up heroically. That's all in the past, though. Right now, there's the Martian independence movement, which the Federation isn't happy with because, ironically enough, Martians seem to not really care for war. Not like Rico, who sees the fleet heading out to the front lines and is frustrated he can't come with. So we got a lot of downtime here. Uh, let's fill it out with an exposition dump in that classic Starship Troopers newsreel style dripping with propaganda. Opinion polls show that one in three Martians are tired of fighting a war that doesn't affect them and a startling 73% said they'd much rather drink beer. I'm kind of surprised it's that low. Who the hell would choose to go fight giant alien arachnids over drinking a beer? I mean, even if you're not a beer drinker, fight giant alien monsters. Uh, still a pretty easy choice to make. Opinion polls aren't nearly as important as the Will of the Sky Marshal, though. Introducing Emma Watts, <coughs> Amy Snap, played by Emily Neves. She says that Martian independence ideas are silly and of little concern. Would you like to know more? <laughs> Personally, I'd like to know why her approval ratings are allegedly so high when she's got such an evil fucking grin. 
Point is, the fleet is moving on to the AQC and with them, Carmen Ibanez, played by the same lady who voiced her in Starship Troopers Invasion, Lucy Christian. It's getting thick out there. Carmen. Carmen? Carmen. And here we have another familiar face, played by the same actor who voiced him in Invasion, Justin Doran playing Carl Jenkins. Hell, in that movie they had David Matranga playing Rico, so at least they didn't recycle absolutely everybody! He's decided to contact Carmen to let her know that she's got to go to Mars and deliver a message to Rico for him. Her because his psychic powers can't get through to him, and the message is... Uh, actually, fuck the message. Just get your ass back to Mars and help Rico, because some bad shit's about to go down. If the truth about Mars ever comes out, it will destroy the Federation. Is the truth really that bad? Do you want to know the truth about Mars? Yeah. Mars is the Milky Way. They're the exact same candy bar. It's just marketed as Milky Way in America. Mind blown. He never does tell her the whole truth anyway, as armed guards attempt to arrest him. This proves to be no issue for the super psychic. But it seems that Mr. Jenkins forgot his one weakness. Cute young Japanese women. Or was that my weakness? PSI asshole. <laughs> Carl? Carl? Are you really in trouble because how much effort is it taking you to transmit grunts across the galaxy? As his psychic ass didn't see that one coming, Carl is arrested. And around the same time, Rico is bringing the squad out of another failed simulation mission, only to find that their station is being rocked by bug plasma from the surface of Mars. Bugs on Mars? Is this the next training sim, sir? Negative. This is real world, Trooper. Get everyone into battle armor. Oh fuck, if the simulation's that good, someone give me Starship Troopers VR. I want to know what it feels like to get ripped in half and accidentally nuke my friends. Sure, Mars has a stage 4 infestation that nobody fucking noticed until now, and by all accounts, they're all gonna fucking die. But Rico has an idea. Take his unit of mobile infantry who still have problems figuring out which boot goes on which foot, and kill them all! We've trained for it, so today's the day! You're a brass ball trooper through and through, Rico, and goddammit, I'm going with you! Larry, I'm quitting the company and starting my own, and by the way, I feel great. Ooh. Steve, you're a great guy with great skills, you're gonna do great. What the hell, I'm coming with you. Ooh. I'm committing insecticide and I feel great. Sure, the whole fucking station is coming down around them and they have to get out as soon as possible, but that doesn't mean we don't have time to give the gang an inspirational speech to set the mood. Mars is your home, troopers. And today, she needs your help. She? Mars... The god is... May... Men are from... Yeah. Dropping down to the planet is a little more complicated than the simulations made it sound, though. First of all, they have to blow up the side of their own space station in order to get the dropship to take off in the first place. Second, it's not going to be able to make a landing, so they're gonna need to open the back and just leap the fuck out. The choice is yours! Sit here and die! Or make the jump and die! <laughs> Either way, it's gonna be a pretty short movie. That's not so bad. I mean, it's still bad, but they do make it out of the dropship in one piece. The bad news is MI's got a 12% casualty drop rate that's pretty hard to crack. Now let's have a moment of silence to remember... Guy, uh, the screamer? I should be more silent without him around here anyway. That's not the only risk from the drop. I mean, there's all the arachnids they're coming down on top of, and the pea shooters they have to hold them off with, but after they land, they try to regroup. However, Rat's ass isn't responding. Looks like Rat's ass popped a seal and froze to death. Oh, not the main guy's happy friend who was returning from the previous movie! Oh, how many more must die before we get rid of these sadistic writers? There's still the problem with the horrifyingly bad infestation on Mars to worry about, though. While it's certainly a number far greater than a single mobile infantry unit can handle, fortunately they just so happen to have their handy-dandy mini-nukes strapped to their backs. And if they can take those plasma bugs out, it'll give everyone a better chance at dealing with the remaining arachnids. Oh, yeah, I bet you feel nice and strong now, but wait until you try this mission on Inferno and find out it takes five or six of those nukes to kill one of these things. 
This time, though, they survive the encounter and have no idea when or if rescue will be coming. Rescue like Carmen, who has not yet turned around as per Carl's request, but is sticking around the AQZ complaining that they're all going to die if they stick around when she gets word of the infestation on Mars. If that's not a big enough hint she should break rank and head back there, the FIA just so happened to show up just now and demand she surrender her ship to them without question. Well then, now that the entire universe has come together to tell her it's best to just break rank and get your ass back to Mars, she breaks rank and starts heading back to Mars. Back with the Federation, though, they're already running the cover story for the Martian infestation. Federal scientists now believe an undetected bug meteor may have impacted the Martian outback three years ago. But who should we blame for this tragedy? Federal psychologists say it's most likely Martians. Holy hell, does that take victim blaming to a whole new level? Somehow, Martian desires for independence, freedom, and human rights are a bad thing, and therefore bad things happen. At least that's the angle Federation's taking under Amy Snap, and it does wonders for her approval ratings. The more people hate Martians, the more they like you. See, politics in the future is like mean girls with planets. Only one thing could spoil her popularity now, and that would be a rogue psychic off his leash, who she's holding captive. Wake him up. Huh, yeah, nothing puts more spring in my step than a good old-fashioned concussion. Seems the Martian infestation was more than a little obviously intentional, and Carl knows Amy was the one who set it in motion. However, she intends to use him as the fall guy, and somehow felt he needed to wake up and they needed to let him know and give him the chance to spout a few more cryptic plot points before they put him under again. Now, oh, well, at least Rico and friends on Mars are doing better than he is. This is Martian National Guard, please identify. Well, I'll be a Martian's uncle. The Martian National Guard, George, played by John Swayze, is swooping in to save the day. And they really lucked out that he just so happened to be in the same bumfuck area of Mars when there are actual cities on the planet. Unfortunately for them, the rescue is interrupted by the bugs attacking yet again. So they must all launch into the rescue ship as fast as possible. Rico! No! He's fine. We got a returning character death with rat sass. I'm pretty sure at this point you could take Rico and throw him into a black hole blender, and all it's gonna do to him is give him an even darker sense of humor. But they can't stop to check if he's alright. The bugs are too bad, and instead they fly off, certain that Rico is no more. So let's quickly get another newsreel up before we spend too long thinking about how obvious it is that Rico is still alive. Any planet that symbolizes anger, war, and rampant male sexuality deserves to be blown up. Anger, war, and rampant male sexuality? Did that guy just describe my channel? The people seem to unanimously agree that Mars would look a lot better after an Alderaan makeover. The point is, it's time for the Sky Marshal to address her adoring public. Yeah, the propaganda subtext of this movie is about as subtle as EDF pest control. As it stands, Mars is boned, but hey, don't need to worry your pretty little heads over that. They just so happen to have a handy dandy Q-bomb at the ready, and the thing is powerful enough to blow the entire fucking planet up, eliminating that nasty arachnid threat pretty conclusively. We can't afford to wait, because... <sighs> oh, Japan, just thinking of the Death Star method gets her off that much, huh? Or that was the traitorous Carl Jenkins fucking with her speech, which was performed live despite there being no need to do so. In other news, Rico is still alive! And so is someone who we saw very clearly get killed way back in the first movie. Diz? <laughs> you died at Whiskey Outpost. Wait, am I dead too? Well, you are being played by CGI, and that is a really bad sign. And yes, this is Dizzy Flores, played by Dina Meyer, who you better damn remember as Dizzy Flores from the 97 Starship Troopers movie. Yes, fantastic tits, Dizzy's still dead, but she suddenly appeared before Rico to help guide him through the Martian desert on a quest. It's still taking Rico a bit to accept what's going on, of course. So, I'm not dead. Can the dead walk? You've got intergalactic travel, alien bugs, and space psychics. I really don't think that zombies are too far out of the question in this universe. So you're sure I'm not dead? 
Will you stop asking me that already? Well, it just... made sense that I might be dead. I mean, I remember falling pretty far. And then the camera pulls away, so... reasonable assumption. Their riveting conversation does eventually lead to where the hell Rico is marching off to, though. An old terraforming tower where a Q-bomb is being held. He's gotta deactivate it and yada yada yada. Let's go back to talking about high school. Remember all those fun times they had in the first movie? Well, for some strange reason, Dizzy seems pretty interested in Rico's opinion of his old friend Carl Jenkins, and why he hasn't reached out to the guy so much lately. Oh, come, come on, Johnny. Johnny. We, we are friends, friends aren't, aren't we? we? Ah, that makes sense. Dizzy's still dead. That's just Carl's psychic manipulation. To a guy who he was earlier saying his psychic manipulations didn't work on. Of a dead lover. Okay, this got ten times weirder. No time to explain away the awkward situation either, as an arachnid attacks, and Rico must kick its ass with nothing but a combat knife. Which is pretty fucking awesome, but not quite on the same political level as the butting of heads between Carl Jenkins and Amy Snap, both figuratively and literally. You broke my nose! You fuck! Ah. <laughs> There was a little bit of a back and forth between them where she thinks she's the best Sky Marshal ever because she has the best ratings and Carl's telling her that's not how you gauge what's best for the Federation. But honestly, all I ever can take out of the scene is YOU BROKE MY NOSE, YOU FUCK! Thus, Carl can continue cognitively cosplaying as a cute cadaver while Rico discovers his power armor's out of batteries. No bother, he can lose his suit and continue onward anyway, where his luck never quits. Not only does his squad of mobile infantry still flying around because there's like no fucking fleet or stations left orbiting Mars, manage to find Rico's signal, naked and with no batteries, ah fuck it, they find him, and he finds many, many dead mobile infantry, which allows Rico to evade arachnid attack while he at the same time suits up and makes the final mad dash for the terraforming tower. Power suits? That plot armor is insane. Direct hit by bug plasma? Eh, it's a little disorienting, I guess. Still, there's so damn many bugs that Rico is sure he's seen his last battle. That is, until Lieutenant Baba and his men swoop in to save the day. The mobile infantry drops down on Rico's position to provide support, while George makes one last attack on the bugs as a proud Martian warrior. <laughs> Kill them! Heroic as that might be, it's still a little bit awkward that you just went kamikaze up that bug's big blue butthole. Ah oh, well, his sacrifice has bought the guys some time, and conveniently enough, they're all right there by the old terraforming tower, which means when Amy goes live to do her Let's Play of Planetary Annihilation... <laughs> Dislikes? What weakness! Oh, oh no, oh, Sean unsubscribed! Oh god, no! It seems while off screen, Rico's team infiltrated the tower and disabled the Q bomb, so Mars isn't going to blow up today. Something that the public in general doesn't seem to like very much, but in any case, there's still that problem of thousands of bugs crawling all over Mars they have to deal with. What happens if you turn that thing on? You mean like make some weather? I mean, rip the sky apart. So they save Mars, and now they have to destroy Mars to save Mars. Jesus Christ, this really is EDF the movie, isn't it? The plan is that Gio and Camacho go in there and flip every last switch in the place, which should be enough to overload the reactor and cause some ridiculously powerful weather, followed by a planet-shaking explosion. One step shy of planet cracking, so it's cool. Once they get it all set up, the team moves to climb the tower and escape the bugs. I'm sure that was tragic to somebody out there, but I couldn't stop laughing at that poor bastard's death. Oh well, the rest of them can get inside and climb the tower. Ish, uh, still have to run from the bugs, and then there's the question of what the hell they're going to do after climbing the thing. Sounds like you guys are having some fun down there. Is that you, Carmen? Yeah. Where are you? I'm heading in now. They are making things difficult with this weather system. Aha, but 
Carmen swoops in to save the day. Quite literal on the swooping part this time. Unfortunately, the lack of anywhere to land on the side of the tower, combined with the perfect Sharknado they've whipped up, means the best Carmen can do is hang around with the back of the ship open while they just try and make the jump on their own. But at the last minute, Rico falls! Just kidding, they save his ass too. And good thing! Yes, it would take a hell of a lot more than plot armor to explain how in the hell he was supposed to survive that shit. Therefore, happy ending! They blew up only a big fucking part of Mars instead of the whole thing, and saved it! Also, Carl went from prisoner accused of causing the Martian infestation to keeping the Sky Marshal's chair warm, because... psychic. The uh, fact that he knew the infestation was coming and let it happen isn't anything to be too concerned about anyway. Much like all that if the truth gets out, the Federation could be destroyed stuff from earlier, as in very short order, the truth gets out, and the public responds in the most devastating way possible. What did Snap know, and when did she know it? What the fuck did Snap know, and when did she know it? A musical protest. Control the will of the people by singing songs that don't rhyme endlessly until they break down and give you everything you want. Anyway, that was Starship Troopers, Traitor of Mars, and it's everything I've ever wanted out of a Starship Troopers sequel. Sequels to the 97 film are notoriously terrible. So much so, the fourth film, Invasion, was just Kinda okay, but I don't think anyone cared. The consensus is that Starship Trooper sequels suck, and no minds are being changed with that one. Traitor of Mars, though? It just might convince a few Starship Troopers fans that there is at least one decent movie in the franchise outside of the original. It might seem like a minor thing to have Casper Van Dien back as Johnny Rico, but I have to say I give a much greater damn about his adventure through the movie than just about anyone out of Invasion. At least three times more damn. Dina Meyer returning as Dizzy was... Incredibly confusing, but welcome as well. One area I have to praise in this film is its visuals, which I also have to complain about. It's a mixed bag, to put it lightly. Some sections on Mars facing armies of arachnids in the sun look almost good enough to be in the 97 movie. Other parts with a few people on a ship and mild lighting are so awkwardly animated and poorly rendered, I'm left wondering if you can't get a better looking shot on a PlayStation 3. Fortunately, the bulk of the movie takes place on Mars, where things look awesome, and we get big motherfucking battles, far greater than what we saw throughout Invasion. There's political intrigue and subtext, sure, but the big attraction is big battles with big bugs and big bombs. Overall, Starship Troopers, Traitor of Mars, finally feels like Starship Troopers again. It's not exactly the same, we're still learning more secrets about the Federation and nothing about the bugs. And the propaganda is much more obvious in general, but god damn it, it was a fun ride. Coming in at four wake-up haymakers out of five. Yeah, the story isn't the most creative, and the payoff is pretty basic, but goddamn big armies of bugs and explosions and fighting and... Oh, I gotta fire a PDF again. Anyway, thank you all for watching, I'm Decker Shadow, and remember... Come on, you apes! You wanna live forever?! You better remember that, they say it like five or six times in this movie.